TikTok ads might be one of the newer ad platforms to us, but they're firing on all cylinders when it comes to the different capabilities that the platform has. In a previous video, I talked about all the targeting options that you can utilize on TikTok, and I didn't really go too far in depth into the retargeting options because I thought that they warranted their own video. That's where we are now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the audience manager and then talk about the five main types of audiences you can create with TikTok. When you're in the TikTok ads manager on the dashboard, it will look something like this. Just like nearly every other platform we talk about on this channel, the audience section where we're gonna create the retargeting audiences lives in its own manager on the TikTok platform. That's gonna be under assets and you click audiences. Once you're here, there are two types of audiences you can create. You can create a custom audience and a lookalike audience. I already talked about lookalike audiences a bit in our TikTok targeting options video. So now I'm gonna stick with the rest of this video in just the custom audience section. Here you'll see the five major types of retargeting audiences we can use on the TikTok platform. Customer file, engagement, app activity, website traffic, and lead generation. Let's hop in with the first one for customer file. The goal with the customer file retargeting audience on TikTok is similar to what we would utilize for a customer upload on Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, any of those other platforms. But there is a bit of a difference here. There's no option to upload name, email, phone number, city, state, zip, any of that sort of thing. For TikTok, we're going to have to do the IDFA, which is a identifying number from Apple, or a GAID, which is an identifying number from Google based on the device that people are using. This is something that is thrown a bit into turmoil with the iOS 14 updates because some people can opt not to have apps track their IDFA number. But for those who don't, you'll still be able to track those and you can keep track of those in your platform. If you have a list of all of those numbers, you can then upload them into TikTok to target users based on their unique device ID. So this is a bit more sophisticated than what we have for most other platforms that we utilize where it's just based on personal information. You can upload it as the original value, which basically just means that it's not a hashed file, or you can upload it in the MD5 or SHA256 hashed formats. If you wanna learn more about the different formats to see which one makes the most sense, you can click learn more. There's a whole help article that'll help you out, but that's a little bit more in the weeds than what I wanna talk about today. Once you get all those numbers formatted and everything is squared away in the settings that TikTok has, you can upload that file as either a CS SV or a TXT format, and it's pretty easy otherwise. Lastly, you can give your audience a name down here at the bottom. And once you've got that in place, which I will not for this video, you just click confirm and your audience will upload, work on matching to the individual users. And then that audience that has matched will populate for you to use in your campaigns. The second type of audience we can create is engagement. And this is going to be based on people who saw, clicked, or engaged with your content on the TikTok platform. If you watched our video on Facebook retargeting options, this is going to feel fairly similar to those audience types. The first thing you'll notice is that we are in this box here, this tiny gray outline, and it has include at the top of it. So the first thing we need to do is start to choose how we're going to include certain people. We get to choose based on the actions that they've used and then the date range that they did that action. So here's the list that you can choose from. There are quite a bit. You can choose from anybody who clicked on your ad, got an impression of your ad, anybody who did a two second view, six second view, or any of the different percentages watched of your videos on the platform. For now, let's just leave it as click. Then for the date range, you can choose anywhere from the last seven days to the last 180 days. There's no way to customize these date ranges. You simply get to choose which one you want, whether it's seven, 14, 30, 60, 90, or 180, and that's all you get. The last piece is where you get to choose the ad group that triggered this specific action, whether it was the click for the sake of the example that I have here, or if you did a video watch of 100%, you get to choose the specific ad groups that triggered that action. I don't have any ad groups in this account because this is just a placeholder account. So there's not anything to choose from when I click that drop down. But if you do have campaigns built out, you'll get to choose individual ad groups. If you don't choose any, it will default to an account level and include in this example, anybody who clicked on any of my ads in the last seven days, regardless of campaign, ad group, any of that. While we're still in the include box, you can come over here and add more rules. And we can try to broaden our audience and make an or statement saying if anybody clicked on our ads in the last seven days or 
an additional action, or you can narrow your audience and say anybody who clicked on my ad in the last seven days and also took this other action. So just for example, let's click on narrow. And now you'll see here that it has this language that I just used. So they did the click on the ad and people who've carried out the following actions. Here you'll get the same list of actions that you can utilize, the click all the way through the video views, and then you have the same date ranges available, as well as the option to choose specific ad groups that you want those actions to have come from. If you decide you don't wanna have that additional rule and you added it here just for example, and you decided that you don't want it, all you have to do is click delete and you're right back where you started. The next section is where you can explicitly exclude people from your audience. So let's click on that here. It'll look very familiar. The exclude builder is going to be the exact same as what we had in the include box up above. You get to choose any of the specific actions, any of the date ranges, and then you can either exclude more or delete the exclusion however you see fit to get the audience that you want. For now, I'm gonna hit delete. And that brings us down to the bottom section here, the audience settings, which are pretty easy. You can give your audience a name, just like we've said in any other video on this channel. You should make sure that the name of the audience is something that actually tells you what the audience is, not just something generic. Then the last option you have down here is about auto refresh. If you enable auto refresh, your audience will automatically refresh to include the latest user data according to the look back window you set. If you disable this feature, your audience will not automatically refresh. So effectively, for most audiences that people would use, I would highly suggest utilizing the auto refresh. That means day over day, you're going to include the users that took this action from the day before, and you're going to drop off the earliest day in that look back window. So if I created this audience on a Tuesday and then we shift it over into Wednesday, I then will now have the users from yesterday, Tuesday in the list, and I will no longer have users from last week's Tuesday in the list. So basically, if you want this audience to keep being new all the time based on recent performance, have this auto refresh enabled. I'm gonna go a little out of order here and instead of doing app activity, I'm gonna do website traffic first. This is where we can use the TikTok pixel to create a list of people who have visited or took specific actions on our website. The good news is that all the builders for the rest of the audiences are going to look pretty similar to the one that we just did for engagement. So I don't have to spend too terribly much time on any of them individually. We still have our include and exclude options, and then we have the ability to add more rules off to the right. The only thing that's going to be different are going to be the actions that people have taken out and the source of those audiences. So here we can go into the dropdown for the different actions people have done on the website. These are going to be based on pixel events firing from the TikTok ads pixel. So here we have page view, button click, form submission, phone consultation, download button click, all sorts of different events that people could have taken on your site. But remember that all of these need to have been set up with the TikTok pixel and they need to be hard coded on your website, whether you're using that through a plugin or you're using it through Google Tag Manager, one of those things. These are not going to be events that just pop up you will have to have customized your pixel to include these different actions. Speaking of pixels, that's the data source for this audience type. And just like we used the ad groups for the engagement section, you can choose different pixels if you have multiple set up on your website from the dropdown. In this example, I have one in this account. I would have to blur out the information, so I'm not gonna click on this dropdown. But basically, any number of pixels that you have in your TikTok account, you can choose to include users from individual pixels or combined in your website audience. As I mentioned earlier, you still have the option to exclude people in all the same ways, and you can utilize the same date ranges, anything from seven days to 180 days, depending on what your look back window wants to be. Lastly, for the audience settings, we have the exact same options. You can add a name, and then you can choose whether you want this audience to always stay up to date and auto refresh, or if you want it to be a static list and only a snapshot in time. Okay, now let's go back to app activity, where you can create a list of people who downloaded your app or took specific actions, such as making a purchase within your app. We'll focus on just the pieces that are different here, since the builder is going to be the same. You have all of the different actions that people have taken. And again, these will need to be customized in your app itself. So it will come down to a little bit of coding. It's not as simple as we might like it to be, but there are a ton of different actions that people can have taken in your app that you can utilize to create an audience in TikTok. We've got install, add payment info, add to cart, launch, checkout, generate lead, all sorts of stuff. So if any of these are the types of actions that you wanna to use to create your audiences, 
you can do that to your heart's content. Then you can adjust the additional rules or exclude users. Then when you're finished, just give it a name, decide if you want it to auto refresh and you're all set. The last audience type we have is for lead generation, where we can create a list of people who viewed or submitted an instant form in a lead generation ad. This is really exciting for me, to be honest, because TikTok only recently came out with a lead generation campaign. We do have a video that you can check out that runs you through that. And you can see that up in the top of your screen right now. But a lot of other platforms that launched lead generation didn't follow up this quickly with the ability to create an audience based off of that lead generation form activity. I'm looking at you, LinkedIn. That was a big miss. But TikTok has done it, makes me happy. So let's see what types of audiences we can create. The builder here is going to feel very similar to the other audiences where we have the actions you can carry out date range and the ability to layer in different rules or exclude people. The difference is our date ranges are a little bit different. These only go back 90 days. There's not a 180 day option. So remember that it'll only go back 90 days for the actions. And then the actions themselves are going to be based on the form. So we only have two, anybody who submitted the form or viewed the form. That's it. We've only got those two options. So depending on the type of list you want to create, make sure that you are including the right folks and excluding the right folks. If you want to target people who opened up the form but didn't submit or opened up the form and did submit, maybe for an exclusion or a seed audience for a lookalike, any of those different options are available. But just like for the other lists, Make sure that you've got all your rules mapped out correctly so that you've got the right users in the audience. Once you're finished, give it a name, set it to auto refresh or not if you don't want to, and you're ready to go. One of the things that I do genuinely love about TikTok is they seem to have studied what a lot of different ad platforms have done and they've just created their own version. As you can tell, as I've gone through this video, a lot of this is very similar to the other platforms and it makes it very easy to jump in and feel comfortable even if TikTok is a completely new ad platform to you. When you're ready to get started, it's obviously very easy to start creating these audiences, but you will have to meet the minimum requirement for users to start targeting them or excluding them in your campaigns. And that's going to be the minimum of a thousand users for each of these different audience types. So make sure you have enough users in here that you can start layering them into your campaigns. If you're running any ads on TikTok and utilizing these different audience types, I would love to hear your experience of how they're performing. How do you see the engagement audiences on TikTok perform compared to Facebook or any other platform? Or have you not run any campaigns and I haven't answered all of your questions? Either way, hit us up in the comments below and we'd love to talk to you. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.